Well, good morning and welcome to episode five of our new podcast, Next Step. Uh, today we're going to be discussing faithfulness. And uh, it's a natural progression, right? Uh, and again, this, do, this doesn't go just for somebody who's a new believer, but all of us have a progression to make in faithfulness. And so we talked about salvation and then baptism, church membership, talked about discipleship yesterday. And so today we're going to talk about faithfulness. And so the first aspect, because really the, that, that blanket of faithfulness is it's very deep. There's many different things we could talk about in that manner. But specifically today, we're going to deal with two, two issues. And one is faithfulness in our daily walk. And the second is faithfulness in our church attendance. And so, Pastor Morales, how are you doing today? I'm doing well. It was good to uh, get back to the gym today after uh, a hiatus away from exercising. That's right. That's right. I feel much better when we work out not only our minds, but our bodies as well. For it's sure. good for us. That's right. I know it profit is little, but it does profit. <laughs> it's, it might be a little, but it's still profit. That's right. And so, and so Pastor Morales, if, if you wouldn't mind sharing uh, today, because, again, there's going to be people listening here that don't have a daily walk with God. And there's going to be some that, that have had a daily walk with God for years, um, but maybe have, they've been stagnant. And so, again, we're talking about uh, taking our next steps. And really, every year, we should be praying and seeking the Lord for our next step in our Christian walk. And in our daily walk, that should include, um, you know, moving forward. Uh, Pastor Folger in Cleveland used to always say, if we're not moving forward in our Christian walk, if we're staying still, we're basically backslidden already, because that's the inevitable result of it. And so... I'll ask you if you if you don't mind share uh, some some testimony of of some spiritual growth in your daily walk uh, throughout the years. Again, you you got saved at the age of eighteen, so you've been saved uh, for a while now, and obviously you've been in ministry for a while. And so, if you can just kind of walk us through uh, the progression that you've made over the years, uh, and then I'll do the same. Well, for me, you know, uh, walking with the Lord was something that was very foreign to me. Obviously, when I first got saved. Because I knew nothing about walking with God. I knew nothing about reading the Bible, nothing about prayer. And it took some time. It took some time to adjust, to figure out, you know, how do I do this? How do I fit this into my schedule? And it was, there was a lot of, pardon me, I had to walk upstairs because mm-hmm. there was a dog barking out back. No problem. And, and, and just to give you a minute, um, we will at a later time, um, if, if we continue past the 20th, kind of break down different aspects of walk and give people uh, different programs like how, how to pray and things like that. And so we can get into more of that later, um, but primarily what we want to focus on here. And if you have questions, please let us know. We'll, we'll talk to you and we'll, we'll walk through, give you some suggestions what we do. Um, but, but the the idea of just being in that continual daily walk, you know, read your Bible and pray every single day. Yeah, it was, it was, it was a challenge because again, I wasn't used to doing anything like that. And I had to really discipline myself, and it took some time. There was a lot of trial and error, a lot of trial and error, trying this, and, you know, that didn't work. For, for instance, I'll give you an example. <clears throat> I tried to read through the Bible in a year uh, shortly after I was saved, but it, I, it, it, it would never, I was never able to complete it till like, five or six or seven years down the road. Uh, I would start out really strong. In January, <clears throat> you know, we're going cover to cover, Genesis 1-1, Revelation 22-21. And, you know, I would get so far, and then life would happen, and I would get distracted. And, and so the next year, I would try it again, and, and I kept trying and trying and trying year after year. And, and it was becoming very frustrating because I couldn't, I couldn't seem to not be able to finish. And then there was a year where I broke through. I found a... a uh, chronological Bible reading schedule and basically you're reading the Bible as the events happen chronologically instead of just reading, you know, from Genesis 1-1 to Revelation 22-21 all the way through, which is nothing wrong with that. I, I do that now. Uh, but that chronological Bible reading schedule helped me complete it because I would put all the passages in the various different books that were talking about the same events. We would re- I would read them at the same time. And so that, for some reason, that helped me to break through. And then I used that schedule for many years, and I've switched since then. Now I'm doing just regular, you know, Genesis 1-1 all the way through. But, you know, it's going to take trial and error for all of us to figure out what works best for for us. And and there's many different uh, times of the day. There's many different schedules, like you mentioned. I kind of have my own thing that I do that I've done for years. And so we should... 
Uh, you know, God, I always tell people, because people will always say, well, do you need to do it in, your, in the morning? I said, well, I, I'm a morning person, and so I want to give the Lord my best, and so I do it in the morning. Um, but, yeah. but but you want to give the Lord your best. And so your daily walk should be when is best for you as an individual. And so yeah. that, that could vary. And so, um, you know, I've only been saved again for probably about 10 years. I think we're going on 11 now um, as far as many, as many years as I've been a Christian. When I first started reading my Bible, I read just one chapter a day. My prayer would maybe be five, maybe 10 minutes. And that was okay. That was, that was where I was at. I was a, I was a baby Christian. Uh, but since then, I've increased. I've gone from reading one chapter a day to two. And then I remember the first time I actually attempted and made it through reading my Bible through in a year. I think you have to read about three chapters a day to be able to do that. So you see the progression. Then I remember uh, I went to four chapters a day. And I was there for a little while because once I started at the Bible Institute, I was studying so much and doing so many things that I really didn't have much of, you know, uh, to add on to. But since I've gotten done with that, it's been a couple of years, I went from four chapters a day to six chapters a day. And, and, and then from there, I, I went at six, I believe that's about reading your Bible through in totality about twice a year. Um, and so now, now this year, uh, the Lord has, has burdened me for my next step to do eight chapters a day. And I believe I'll get through about three times uh, in the whole year in my Bible. And so that you just see the progression. But I didn't start out doing that. Um, I started out by reading one chapter a day. Um, and, and, and even if it's, you know, I, I always tell people it's more important, I think, to do it daily. Uh, you know, even if it's a half a chapter, do it daily as opposed to, you know, trying to do one whole chapter every other day. Yeah. And I don't, I don't want to discourage anyone that's listening to this by hearing what we are doing and thinking, well, wait a second, that's, I don't have time to do all that. I, I can't, listen, you do what works for you. Mm -hmm. As long as what Pastor Sulia said, you're doing something, you have to do something. Now, if you, if your goal, obviously if you set a goal, it helps. And reading through in a year is, is a good goal to have. But let's say you can't read through in a year. Let's say you're not a reader. You're not a natural reader. It's not something you enjoy. You know, my wife is like this. She's not a natural reader. She doesn't enjoy reading. Uh, I would say I'm not a natural reader. Uh, I do enjoy it, uh, but it's got to be something that, I, that I'm interested in. Otherwise, you know, I'm not. You know, Judy, your daughter Judy, she's a natural reader. Mm -hmm. She reads all the yeah. time. Some people aren't, aren't like that. So maybe you should set the goal to finish the Bible through in two years. Mm -hmm. or maybe three years, whatever. But you, you have to intake some spiritual nourishment each and every day. You wouldn't go a whole long time without eating physically. You shouldn't uh, unless you're spiritually fasting. And even then, you, you still got to be careful. But you have to eat. Go ahead, Pastor Sugley. Yeah, and you know, many, many Christians have taken financial peace with Dave Ramsey. And he often talks about setting small goals and paying off debt. Um, you know, pay off the smallest card first so you see that you're making progress. And in the same way, I was completely happy because I was reading a chapter a day. And for me, just to read it every day was my accomplishment. And then when I bumped it to two, it was I'm just making that next step. But it wasn't, I mean, it took me a couple of years to even try to go all the way through the Bible in a year. And that's okay. You know, and I don't care if you've been a Christian for 20 years and you think I've never read it through. Well, the 2021 is, is the time to start. Again, don't worry about the past worry about the future. And so don't look at where we are now. Look at where we came from. Um, same with prayer. My prayer life used to be literally five to 10 minutes. Now on average, I usually spend about 45 minutes alone with the Lord in prayer in the morning. Now, again, obviously we pray throughout the day, meals and, and with our families and things like that, but, but specifically me alone with uh, the Lord in prayer. But it, it didn't start that way. And so don't try to start it out that way. Start by reading, you know, one chapter or do a daily devotional that has maybe five verses and a little paragraph, whatever the case may be. Um, but but if, you, if you've been doing this a while, push yourself. If you've been reading like I was, kind of stuck in, in the pattern for a few years doing the same thing, try to, try to set a, a goal, but an achievable goal, as Pastor Morales said, uh, to be able to, um, you know, continue that walk forward, you know, growing in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You know, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. And so that doesn't just talk about salvation. That's talking about increasing our faith beyond that. And so a few things that, that we wrote down here, uh, just to talk about as far as what a daily walk is, should consider. Because some people might be doing a partial daily walk. Some might not be doing any at all. And so the first thing, obviously, we talked about is prayer. In Luke chapter 18, verse 1, uh, it says that he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought to always, to, ought to always pray and faint not. 
Uh, of course, 1 Thessalonians 5.17 talks about praying without ceasing. Now, we know and we're not supposed to always, literally every second of the day, be in prayer to where we can't even talk to anybody else because we're praying. Uh, but, but what is that saying, Pastor? That's saying that we should have a schedule without ceasing. Every morning is my prayer time with God, or every every evening, right? That's a, that's what that's alluding to. We, we should be in a spirit of prayer uh, at all times. Not Like you said, not meaning that we're going to be saying prayers, literal prayers, every second of every minute of every hour of every day. But we should be in a spirit of prayer. We should be willing to pray instantly at all times. But we should have a scheduled time where we set that aside specifically to pray, specifically to not only talk to God, but let God talk to us as we read his word. And so we, we consume the spiritual nourishment by reading the word of God, and we commune with God as we talk to him in prayer. Yeah, and, and, and I don't want uh, anybody to allow the devil to do with what he's done with me uh, and, and, and what he'll try to do with you as well. And that's to tell you that you're too busy uh, to have time um, at some point in the day. You're too busy. You're doing too much. I mean, my schedule was as busy as, you know, anybody that I that I ever had met when I was, you know, in Cleveland, serving in ministry, working and going to the Bible Institute and having a family. Um, but but I by the grace of God, I didn't allow that to take away my daily walk. And part of the reason was, Pastor, because I found uh, this verse in, in, in Mark chapter 1, verse 35. And again, we're not going to read the whole chapter, but if you go and read all of Mark chapter 1, you'll see that in one day's period, uh, Jesus basically spent all day preaching and teaching at the synagogue. And then he went uh, to Peter's uh, house and, his, and he healed his mother-in-law who was sick. And then when they found out that he had, he had done that, people were bringing him people to heal all night. And so he was preaching all day. And you and I know uh, how tiring that is. You know, typically on Monday, we're not worth much because we're so tired after a Sunday. And so he was preaching all day. And then he was healing people all night. And, and then verse 35 is, in, and it says, and then the next morning, rising up a great while before the day. So much earlier than the sun rising, the Lord Jesus Christ himself woke up. And he went out and departed into a solitary place and there prayed. And so if the Lord Jesus Christ, who again, yes, he was 100% God, but he was also 100% man. And him being 100% man, he got tired. He had to eat just like us. And so a man who spends all day preaching and then all evening with people and, and healing them, uh, went to bed and got up a great while before the day began and went out and departed into a solitary place to pray. And so again, if, if it's good enough for the Lord Jesus Christ, then it's good enough for me. And so no matter how busy we are, we need to make time, even if it is just a few minutes. You know, a, a daily devotional reading and 10 minutes of prayer you know, won't take you more than maybe 15, 20 minutes. Right, Pastor? Yeah, it's, it's a matter of discipline. We talked about it, I think, yesterday. Uh, discipleship requires discipline. And if something is important enough to you, you will find a way to do it. And if something is not important enough to you, you will find an excuse not to do it. And that's everybody. That's you. That's me. That's everyone listening. That's every human being on, on the earth. If this, if they find something that they want to do bad enough, they'll fit it in. They'll fit it in their schedule one way or the other. But if there's something that, well, I don't, I don't really want to do that, then they'll find an excuse not to do it. I've seen a shirt that is pretty humorous that said, uh, I'm sorry I'm late. I didn't want to come. You know? <laughs> <laughs> You've seen that shirt, right? No. Well, it, it's pretty funny. It's yeah. yours. And, and I have felt that way at times. Like, I really don't want to go to this. And, and what do I do? I find an excuse or I find a reason not to or I find a, a reason to show up late or whatever the case may be. We all do what we want to do. And if you want to do something bad enough, if you want to do Bible reading and prayer time and, and walking with the Lord, you want to do it bad enough, you'll figure out a way, whether it's early in the morning, late at night, and during lunch, whatever. And I've done all those. I've, I've tried all three. Uh, I've tried various ways. You have to find what works for you, but, but it, it's, it's, it's a mandatory. You must have this mm -hmm. in order to reach your full potential for the Lord. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you're right. There, there's plenty of excuses out there to find. You just got to fight through it. And I'll, and I'll say this, um, and I'm sure you could attest to this too, uh, Pastor Morales, but as many times I didn't want to, even, even now, go to church or read my Bible or pray or go soul winning. There's never been one time, I don't care how tired I was, how well I didn't feel that I didn't, when I didn't submit and follow through, that I didn't feel better 
and more energized and more encouraged afterwards. You'll never, ever regret something that you do for the Lord. But there's been many a times where I, I failed and I didn't go through with something and I never felt any better. I actually felt worse afterwards. And so, you know, again, you, we can't allow the, the, the devil to rob us of this. And so we know, obviously, that prayer is essential uh, and we need to have prayer time every single day. And of course, we also know um, that goes hand in hand with that would be Bible reading. And so I got a, just a few verses, and again, we've already kind of talked about different, you know, amounts of Bible reading and things like that, but just, you know, again, the, the idea of a daily walk with God. And so Psalms chapter 1, verse 1 and 2 says, Blessed, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And so you see here that this man in verse uh, 1 uh, is, is, is walking a good walk. And then in verse 2, it kind of explains to us how he's doing this because he's in the law of the Lord. He's in the word of God, and he meditates on it. So he's not just reading it, but he meditates on it. It's not just about reading the word. It's about reading it, meditating on it, and then, of course, acting on it. And he says, this is, he does this day and night. Now, 1 Peter 2, 2 says, as newborn babes, Desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. And so again, this is saying that I don't care how, how, how theological you get. I don't care how spiritually mature you get, how much meat you, you are able to handle. We should always, even still, as newborn babes, continuously desire the sincere milk of the world, word uh, that we may grow thereby. So to continue to grow us. And uh, last time I checked, Pastor, um, it's been a little while since I've had babies in the house. But babies eat uh, milk pretty often, right? It's something that you, like you said earlier, you need to do you know, early and often and daily. Well, the Psalm chapter 1 passage that you read, uh, it, it again, it emphasizes the, um, the foundational uh, consistency because it talks about uh, he shall be like a tree that's planted by the rivers of water, a tree that's planted whose roots uh, have gone down deep, mm -hmm. uh, whose roots are steady, and he's constantly being fed water by that river, and eventually the nutrients from that water, from the roots that are down deep, uh, they come up and they, they, they grow, it goes through the tree, and then there's fruit mm -hmm. that comes as a result. And so it's, it's, it's consistency. Mm -hmm. uh, it's being, being consistently uh, uh, faithful, as we're talking about faithfulness, faithfully consistent doing, doing this Bible reading, this prayer time, all the time, every day doing it now are we going to be perfect at it are there going to be days where we where we mess up yes but it should that should be less the, the more we grow in christ the less we should have that happen and it's going to happen none of us are perfect but we should be we should be getting better at it as we grow the exception not the rule right it should be having less and less and then lastly exactly. i put down i'm sorry go ahead i just said exactly and then lastly i put down here because i don't think you know uh, I think it's important that we realize that this is part of our walk, you know, the importance of music. So I put down here godly music. Now, again, this doesn't necessarily mean that that you have to, uh, you know, sit there and sing like you're in church and things like that. Uh, but Colossians 3.16 says, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom. And so when we're in the word, when we're in prayer, and the word of Christ, the living word and the written word is in us and, and uh, dwells in us richly in all wisdom, it goes on to say, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your heart to the Lord. Now, there's most of the time you'll, you know, my daily walk will include um, afterwards as I'm getting ready uh, to, you know, shave and get ready for the day. Uh, I will be listening to godly music. And then if I have a very good, and I'm on track with all my things, you know, read my Bible, praying and, and listen to some godly music. The rest of the day, I'm typically whistling a, a you know, a good Christian song or singing it, you know, making melody. Um, and things like that. And so, and, and even if you don't do it in that way, you know, um, at some point in your day, there needs to be some sort of godly music coming in. Oh, absolutely. Uh, because as you mentioned earlier, garbage in, garbage out. And mm. what we, what we listen to and what we read, it, it affects us. It impacts us. It, it molds and shapes us. It, it makes us who we are. Um, the, the Bible even says in Proverbs, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. You know, the things that we meditate on, the things that we think about, the things that we listen to, the things that we read, uh, they all impact us. That's why it's so important for us to read the Word of God, pray to the Lord, listen to good 
music that's going to encourage us spiritually, uh, music that's going to lift us uh, and encourage us and, and put our spirits in tune with God. All of that is so important because I find, I find it in my life, I'm sure you find it in your life, Pastor Suglio, whenever I'm walking with God like I'm supposed to be walking with God, the problems that come, I can bear a lot better, a lot easier. And when I'm not walking with God like I'm supposed to be walking with God, the problems overwhelm me, usually. Is that the case in your life? Yeah, absolutely. It's like when Jesus talks about the storm coming, and, and you know, and we're on the solid rock. And again, you know, we need to realize we need that constant fellowship with him. How would our marriages be if we didn't spend time and talk with our spouses? How would our relationship with our children be? It's, it's the same thing with our walk with the Lord. And, 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 and even you are, are, the next thing we're going to talk about, and our, the last thing we're going to talk about today is faithful church attendance. And even that, right? If, if I'm in a daily walk with the Lord, it's a lot easier for me to be faithful to church attendance uh, than if not. And, and so again, it, it all ties in together, the salvation, the baptism, the church membership, the discipleship, and being faithful to our daily walk and then church attendance. And so I got just a few verses here that I'm going to read. And then uh, Pastor Morales and myself are going to, again, share some testimonies of, of how we've grown. Uh, because, again, for, for someone who just got saved, if you look at, well, these guys are crazy. They're here Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night. If the doors are open, they're there. Special meetings, you know, soul winnings on Saturday and things like that. It could be overwhelming. But we didn't start there, and nobody started there, right? It, it, there's a progression involved. But just listen to some of these verses. Um, in Hebrews chapter 10, uh, of course, verse 25 we know is, the most common verse used to talk about faithful church attendance. But Pastor Mix always says, and it's it's awesome because it's it's right there. It's it's the verse right before it. It's actually not even a full sentence until you complete reading 24 and 25. But a lot of times you just kind of miss it because you go to that one verse. And it really helps us understand it's not our, our church attendance isn't just about us receiving and, and being a consumer, but it's about us being a blessing for others as well. And so verse 24 says, and let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another and so much more as we see the day approaching. And so again, this is talking about us being uh, a, a, a very important part of the church service, even if you don't realize it. I never realized this, Pastor, because there was a time where I didn't think me being somewhere really mattered. Uh, and then, you know, I, as you grow and mature and now you're in ministry, you look back and, oh, it's, it is it is a blessing when so-and-so shows up to a, a class activity or or to a, uh, a Sunday school class. It's a blessing when you're behind the pulpit and you can look out and see, oh, so-and-so's here and so-and-so's there. I mean, there's new there's new folks in our church that, that are, are, are about to join the church that haven't even joined yet, but they've had, you know, things have kept them out, whether it be, you know, health issues, traveling, whatever the case may be. And I mean, I, I groan for them. I miss them. I love them. They're my brothers and sisters in Christ. And when they're not there, they might not realize it, but, but something's missing, you know, because we're a family. And then that really, uh, you know, is important that we're all together for that. Yeah. So these two verses, Hebrews 10, 24 and 25, they're contrasting verses. They are, it's a comparison. It says, let us consider one another to provoke the love of good works. And so it says, not. So do this, not this, mm -hmm. right? Verse 24 says, this is what you are to do. Consider one another. Think about others. Provoke each other. Not not in a bad way. Provoke each other in a good way to love and good works. And not forsaking. In other words, do what 24 says. Don't do what 25 says. Not forsaking the assembly. In other words, how do we encourage each other? By being there, by, by being faithful, by being consistent. And as you mentioned, just people's presence makes a big difference. Especially... You know, to to the, the ministers, the pastor, uh, man, the, when people are there in their place, in their spot, doing their their uh, responsibility, what an encouragement that is to him, which in turn he can that 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 uh, spirit and that encouragement he can deflect to others. But it's the other way around when people just don't show up, people are inconsistent, people are unfaithful. Man, it's discouraging to the preacher. It's discouraging to the leaders. And, and that it makes it harder for them to minister to others. Yeah, and you know, um, I there were so many times where I was really trying to get somebody to come to, to whether it be Bible study or whatever the case may be, and, and, and any time I would finally get them to come, 
uh, that was when the devil would keep out the people that were normally faithful that this person knew that that could make some sort of connection and and they were gone they never came back again and so you don't realize uh, even for somebody that may be visiting or, or young in the faith uh, when they don't see somebody that they know or can relate to man it's, it's it's difficult even though we go to church because we're Christians and and not because we're ministers you know I don't consider myself working on Sunday I'm, I'm there to worship the Lord through my service um, they think that we're just supposed to do that because we're pastors, but we're doing it because we're Christians. Um, but when they see other Christians doing it, that's when it really helps. And that's what that's what it helped with me. You know, again, in, in Acts chapter 2, again, we said that is that is the epitome. That should be our mission as a local New Testament church. Uh, what, what they did from verses 41, or even before as they're preaching the gospel, but then verses 41 throughout, it says, And they continued daily with one accord. They were unified in the temple. Daily, they were together daily, uh, unified in the temple and breaking bread from house to house and did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. And here's the whole coup de gras. And the Lord added to the church daily as such as should be saved. And so they used to meet every single day. And so when people ask, well, why do you, why do you go to church um, Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night? I, I used to always say, you know, this is a, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a younger Christian. Well, because they're not open every day of the week, so I go when they are open, and, and you know, and, and that's why we go Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, and so again, that's, humor. I, that's that's funny. Yeah, but that, that that was how I truly felt, you know, because yeah, I, but I, again, people who say, well, we go too much. Well, the, the church in Jerusalem, in the Book of Acts, they met every day, and so uh, are are we going too much or are we going too little? Now, again, I understand life is busy. We all understand. We're, we have children, we have events. I, I get all, we all get that. And God gets that. Mm -hmm. And he understands that. But he knows that if we don't do, uh, if we don't follow his program, his way, all those other things we do outside of church and outside of his program, it's going to collapse. It's going to fall apart. It's not going to be as successful as it can be because we're not putting first things first. Yeah. First things first. And, and, and they met daily. And then the verse in Hebrew said, uh, you know, do not forsake the assembly of yourselves, you know, so much so, so much more so as the day approaches. And of course, we're getting closer to the Lord's return than we're getting further away. And so I don't think it's too much, you know, to do Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday night. But again, yeah, that, we need more church. We don't need less. Amen. For sure. And, and again, we're not trying to put on somebody if, if you're, you know, if you're barely coming every Sunday, then your goal should be to come every Sunday morning. If you've been coming faithfully every Sunday morning, but you haven't yet done Sunday school, that should be your, your your next step for 2021. Um, you know, same with Sunday night. If you're not in the habit of coming back Sunday night, uh, but you're coming Sunday morning for Sunday school and Sunday, Sunday uh, service, well, then that should be your goal. That should be your next step to come back Sunday night. And then, of course, the same with the Wednesday evening service, uh, the additional maybe Bible studies that we offer, uh, going out so many. All of those, you know, so wherever we are, we all need to look at taking our next step. And so I'm going to share my testimony on that. Uh, Pastor Morales to go ahead and share his. And so, so, so my testimony is when I first started going, you know, I would just go to one service a week, right? And then, and then it was, um, okay, well, and, and ironically with me, it was, it was Wednesday night service that I used to go to. Um, but then I started going Sunday morning and Wednesday night. Um, and then I remember somebody trying to get me to come out to Sunday school and I'm like, what am I going to go to Sunday school for? I'm going to the class. You know, what do I need school? Am I a kid? And and so I had no idea what what it was. Again, I was unchurched. You know, I, well, I went to Catholic church, but I was essentially unchurched. Um, and so and so then I submitted to start going to, to to Sunday school. And every time I did, I learned and I grew. And the same thing with Sunday night. I said, Well, why do we got to come back Sunday night? We're already here. Let's just let's just get it over with. But I submitted to what the Lord would have for me to do. And again. I grew and I matured, um, you know, and, and that goes with many other things uh, that, 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 you know, giving and, and things that we're going to get into at a later time, singing out in the service instead of just sitting there reading a book. All that stuff we'll get through to later. Uh, but, but the point is, uh, I started with a baby step. I didn't go from one service to, to, to every service. I did from one to two to three to four, to then soul winning and, and so on and so forth. And so you see a progression over a 10 year period. There was a progression there. And Pastor Morales, you were very similar. Oh man. I, I, it was so hard for me to go to church when I first trusted Christ, because as I told you before, Pastor Sulio Sundays for me, prior to being saved, that was a sleep in day. That was a, you know, a rest day, so to speak. That was a relax, take it easy, you know, work hard throughout the week, 
work overtime, take care of the family, you know, do do house chores on Saturday or whatever the case may be. And then Sunday was for me. Sunday was I'm going to chill out, I'm going to sleep in, um, maybe watch some sports, whatever. You know, and I was just going to enjoy the day for me. And so it was very difficult for me to force myself to get up at a certain time early because I was usually sleeping in on Sundays uh, and then do that consistently. Uh, and then that, that was a struggle. Uh, and then, uh, then I started trying to figure out the whole Sunday school thing. And I'm like, man, then I got to get up even earlier. Right. And so it was very, very difficult. It took some time. It took a, a good year or two before it became natural and, and normal. But if I didn't have the desire to do it, it would have never happened. You know, I have to want to do it. I have to want to be there. And, and it's the same thing for Sunday night and Wednesday night. It was all steps of, of uncomfortableness for me because I wasn't used to doing these things. And, but I had to force myself because I knew they were right to do. It was good for me and I needed it. My family needed it. And so I had to force myself, but it was very, very, very difficult for me. I, I still, to this day, remember waking up on Sunday mornings thinking, what am I doing? Why am I getting up so early? You know, getting up at nine o'clock or whatever. That's not even early, right? Mm. But that's what it felt like to me at the time. And so, but wherever you are, wherever you are in your personal uh, walk, you know, let's let's take the next step. Uh, it doesn't have to be from one service to three services to four services. What's the next step? That's what these podcasts are all about. The next step. Let's all take the next step. Yeah, that's right. And so we, we want you to assess, you know, we talked about baptism. Well, where are you at with that? You know, is that your next step? If not, great. Um, you've already taken that step. What about discipleship? You know, we talked about it being threefold. Getting discipled, being taught how to disciple somebody, or discipling somebody. What's your next step in that? If you're already discipling people, well, then keep on doing it. Disciple more people, maybe. Um, what's your next step with faithfulness in your daily walk? You know, how much re you're reading, how long you're praying, um, godly music, um, and of course with church attendance, you know, one service to two, you know, or even just, even if it's just, you know, I come every other Sunday morning, I want to do it every week, whatever the case may be, uh, you know, pray about it, let the Holy Spirit guide and lead you to your next step, and then submit to it, and, 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 and make it known, uh, you know, accountability is very helpful, let the Lord know that, that if, he, if he'll help you, you, you're willing to do your part, and he will, he will bless that. Don't, don't forget also, too, that you know, say you're listening to this podcast and you say, well, I already go to all the services. I'm in Sunday school. I'm there on Sunday morning. I'm there Sunday night. I'm there Wednesday night. Um, well, what's your next step? Well, have you have you considered soul winning? Have you considered coming out for Super Saturday? Have you considered coming out for witnessing times? Uh, have you considered coming out for, you know, men's breakfast and, and Bible study? You know, there are other areas where you can step up and take a ne another step or, and, and move forward for the Lord in your daily walk. Yeah, absolutely, and, and maybe even start teaching. You know, we talked about it at some point in every person's life. We have to stop being the consumer and start being the one that allows people to consume off of them. And so that's a great point, Pastor. And we'll, again, we'll talk about that more in the next couple of days uh, as we move forward with this thing. Uh, but pray about what your next step is. Amen. Hey, thanks so much for listening to the podcast. We've heard some uh, responses from folks that have been tuning in. Uh, everyone seems to be giving us some positive feedback. We're grateful for that. Again, we just pray that these podcasts will be a blessing and encouragement to you in your walk with the Lord. And let us know if there's anything we can do. If, if you have any questions, anything we can do to be a help to you, any way that we can pray for you, please contact us. Thank you again for listening. May God bless you.